Hello and welcome to this look at some new features in Worldographer. Uh, I'm Joe Wetzel, the creator of the program. This is version 1.45 and I'm recording this on March 22nd of 2022. Um, right now version 1.45 is still a beta so if you want to get it you have to scroll down on the Worldographer downloads page a little bit and there's the upcoming beta download. However, um, that process, and we're doing this because there's a bunch of changes under the covers, um, that process of kind of testing that all out and being more comfortable with it is pretty much near the end. So it'll probably be the main release in the next week or so. Um, just FYI of how to get this and, and where it's at. So what's, uh, what's new? Uh, one of the new features that we're particularly proud of is a hex crawl generator. Uh, Jim Davis of uh, WebDM had put together uh, some videos in the past month, month and a half, on creating your own hex crawl. And he was using uh, some charts originally developed by the Welsh Piper, uh, Aaron Smale. And uh, we've kind of adapted that as well and put those into Worldographer. And uh, I should back up and say that in Worldographer, you can fully generate the world and generate all the details already. Um, this here, uh, if we go to generate nations and empires, so we could generate coasts and generate rivers already um, and... and we haven't done those yet here, but uh, we'll go to Generate Nations Empires, just dry, dive in, because this actually does add features to your map. And boom, you've got a, a, a country here, another one up there, and some others on the other continent over here, I'm sure, and some names for these. And it puts out some cities and towns and a capital, and maybe a, 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 a place where there's a mine or a logging camp or things like that. So it does that for you already. It's been doing, you know, from pretty much from the first year of Worldographer um, that's been in there. But now you can go and right click on a particular hex. And so in the process that, that Jim was using and that, that Aaron had developed, I, I believe, um, you would determine through some roles that there, that there is something interesting in, in a given hex. And uh, so you'd still be doing that by yourself by either saying, well, yeah, the role determined I should have something here, or um, you would just kind of eyeball the map and say, yeah, I kind of want something here. And so you can pick that you want to generate a random hex crawl detail that's minor or major because that's how the chart was developed. And so we'll pick something major to start with. And here we have some ruins, uh, some probably ornate ruins. And here's what's there and some some weird weirdness to it and so forth. We can regenerate this if we want a, a different set of ideas. Uh, regenerate again. So you've got all that going on, um, and the, this this information for the most part has been in Worldographer for a while. If I go into features here, and if I add in say a tower, and uh, let me turn on place freely so that the tower can doesn't have to be anchored to the center of a given hex, and I can put this tower out in the middle of the desert, and then I can select it. So right now it doesn't have a note associated with it. A note is this little yellow square in the center of, of a particular feature. And I can say notes have selected. And so this will randomly generate some information about what's, what's in that tower, uh, what's all about it. Um, and I can regenerate that or I can edit it fully. I can add to it. I can um, you know, throw out what's there and, and write in my own text. Save it, and you get a little note icon there as well. Let me deselect it so you can see that. Um, so that's that's been in Worldographer for a while, but through, through this randomly picking a particular feature and, 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 and putting it on the map where you click, you know, kind of the new shtick. Also, we're adding more details. Uh, we're adding, you know, it was probably like 15 or so of these different icons. Let me filter this by classic. About 15 or so of these different icons probably had data behind them, and we're expanding that already. We've probably expanded and added data for another five or so, and um, probably by the by the time that we um, finish this, we'll have it for you know all all of the uh, interesting icons. You know all these things here. Um, we'll probably have something, uh, some information behind them. Not so much like just the simple circle and that sort of stuff, maybe not, but um, all of your capitals, all of your ruins, all of those interesting things will have something interesting behind them. So let me show a couple more though. Um, so let's right click over here. Let's do a minor feature for this one. And this is just a, a, a good magic area. This is 
gives an uplifting feeling and there's a great, you know, why is it? Well, there was a great evil that ended here and the, the priests hollow it each year. So that's, that's why that is. One more. Do a minor one. So here we have a military camp. Got 150 soldiers, two officers are in this camp. Uh, so that gives you an idea of, of what you can get, and, and a lot of them will come up with no details available yet, um, but, but as I said, we'll be adding, adding the data behind that um, over the next week or so. Uh, minor change in, in this update to Worldographer is that the grid, uh, the default grid, is now only 25% opaque, so it's mostly transparent, so it's not quite as jarring. Likewise, uh, the note icon, the icon here, this little yellow box, is also, um, actually I think that's 50% opaque because it still needed to be seen um, where it is. If you don't like it at all, you can turn it off with the show button here. So that, that lets you turn them on and off. Um, but those are a couple of other smaller changes. Uh, related to the, the, the Welsh Piper list and stuff, we added a couple of new features into the tool. This uh, beacon icon is new. Um, so, you know, if you want to light up the signal fires a la Lord of the Rings and be able to communicate, hey, there's a great threat to country A, so country B can know about it uh, across the mountains. You can add several of these on and say that there's one at the beginning of the mountain, one at the there, and one at there, and so maybe the, the, the hill people over here will know that there's a threat to, to the other kingdom. You also have a construction icon here. Um, we have a, uh, a two different um, camp icons. So this is our original camp icon, and now that's kind of more about a camp of uh, perhaps uh, lumberjacks or some other people working the land. Uh, whereas this camp icon with the flag on top is your military camp. Um, so we've got that there too. Um, let me switch things up now. We're going to go to a, a, a city. Um, so one of the things holding back uh, me being able to release updated um, lists of what might be in buildings when you're generating a city map was the ability to have kind of a building within a building. So if you've got, you know, a big apartment building and you want to have a coffee shop downstairs or something like that, uh, there wasn't really an easy, good way to do that. So we've done that now. Uh, so now I can go into Add View, Edit Note. Let me filter these by apartment because that's what we put the data in for. So when I filter that, then only the, uh, only the buildings that have uh, a part in, in this case I guess I just typed in part of the word apartment up here with their little note icon. So I can now click on this and pull it up. And you can say, see here now, we have a cafe downstairs and what it has available for sale and who might be there and who's working there. You've also got the list of all the different people that live in this apartment building as before. Um, and then you've got uh, a fast food place downstairs as well. So that's a new change that needed to be done to the code of Worldographer before I could update those files. So again, hopefully in the next week or so, we'll be able to get these updated uh, files for the futuristic and even the modern one. I think I did put out a modern one, but it doesn't have this, this additional functionality to it. And um, maybe there might be another type that it would make sense for us to do. But you could also use this for like a strip mall. You want to have a strip mall, and you want to have you know four or five businesses in it, then you'd be able to to do that. So let's see. So that's that change. Uh, another change. Um, let me go back to our classic map, and if I um, scroll down, scroll up to scroll down, scroll down, collapse the scroll up, to collapse that. We've got new functionality for our labels where you can set the alignment of them. So I can type in, you know, this is the great blue ocean, and I can split it across lines. And now I can set that, and by default it is set to be centered because I think in most cases you're going to want that. And so I can put great blue ocean out there. In fact, that's what I want to. I can also change the style and make this a major geographical feature and then it loses that style. 
Um, you've also got left and right justify. Uh, the underlying library isn't really doing justification where it should. You know, if you've got several words on each line, it should it should have them all. It should have the sh all the short lines expand to to match. Um, and it's not doing that. So I think that either I have to figure something out or the, the or the, or the library. I need to remove that option, one or the other. But you've got the other options there. So yeah, if we wanted to right left justify it or right justify it, it does that. Make it center. Um, and then likewise on the features, uh, we've added that here. So if I wanted to say, you know, this is the high wizards tower, and I needed to do that on three different lines, I can now place this tower here. And so it, it, it uh, allows me to do multi-line uh, labels, whereas before this could only be a single line, and uh, I'll probably add an indicator as well there for you to change the um, uh, justification for that as well, but I think in most cases you're going to want to have it centered anyway. Let's see, uh, another change, uh, sticking with labels actually, or going back to label, or sticking, yeah, sticking with labels. If I, um, what I have here is this level change scale. And what I was seeing was when I was using the multiple level, multiple map levels, world, continent, kingdom, province, it was expanding these, um, to match. So if you had a, a, a six to one ratio between your different map levels, for example, um, then this thing here, which is um, about, uh, you know, 75, 80 percent of a hex would, if there was a six to one ratio, might be five hexes big uh, when you, uh, per line, when you, um, when you expand that. So with this level change scale thing, you can set that to zero or only 20%. So like, let's do that. So let's do continent. Let's make a continent level map. Or you're just going to make it three just to keep it small so we can keep the keep it in our window, if you will. Let me pan over here to the... So here we had it set to zero. So it didn't change it at all. You know, and, and that's if you think of how Google Maps does it as you scroll in. Uh, they don't really uh, make the labels any bigger. They kind of might add some more labels, perhaps, but they don't really make them bigger. Um, I can go back here to the world, though, and I can select this, this label. And now we can say 50. And so it's not going to grow three times as, as big. It's going to grow probably one and a half times as big. And that, that's, that's what we're trying to do here. So we get some growth to things, and that's all based on the uh, yeah, so that that's what we're we're, we're seeing there. Did that actually jump, or did I not? That did not jump in size. Oh, I know, because it's tied to the style. Um, so if I wanted to do that, I need to change the style. Let's change the style to use custom style. And then now if I jump it down, 50, yeah. So now you can see that this has grown. So that's, that, that's also tied to the style. All right. Finally, uh, the, the, uh, oh, yeah, finally, uh, coastlines. Um, so as you probably know, in uh, the prior version or prior updates of, of Worldographer, we've added uh, a generate coastline function. And let me create a new World Kingdom map in the, uh, I should mention this too. Uh, we've now got this use suggested pixel sizes uh, list here. This has been here for a while, but the checkbox is new. So if I change from isometric to classic, um, then it's automatically going to change these settings. Likewise, if I change from columns lineup to rows lineup, it's going to change the, the hex width and hex height uh, appropriate, appropriately based on this. But if you don't want that, turn it off. Likewise, these values are all, all being saved. Actually, on the World Kingdom setup screen, they were being saved. So when you pull up the dialog again, it will have all the settings. However, on the... Um, city setup screen and the and the battle map setup screen 
It was not saving most of those, so now it is. Generate a new map. This is using our isometric icon style. And in the prior updates, you probably saw we have a generate coast function, which will let you do isometric prettier, which I need to fix the spelling of prettier. But you get the idea here. It will do this for you. Um, now, what, what what's new, though, is I can go in, oh, let me remove a couple of these shapes. Say you don't like the coastlines that you have there. You want something that either juts in a whole lot or has some very specific coastline. I can come here. These are all just features. These are little stamps that go back on top. And I can remove, say, those three. And then I can go back, uh, I can go over to the shapes. And I can go with preset, and I got coast isometric. And that's going to give me some new settings or set, set some of these values for me. Uh, the drop shadow, the box blur, the colors. Um, also, a little side note here, another change that we made that's kind of cool is giving you little previews of the textures in these drop downs. So in both drop downs, you've got, you can see what, what the, all the textures are. So it's a little bit easier to pick them. Anyway, now that I've done that, I can now, I'm going to zoom in some. And I'm going to pick, a, oh, I got to pick a line. So this works with a line, even though we're going to be also creating a polygon as well. So I'm going to go and I'm going to pick a, right around this corner. And I am drawing a line. And I can make whatever shape I want to have here. And then I'm going to draw, finish up right there at that point. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a control click. And I'm going to control click right, uh, I'm going to snap because I want this, I want to kind of hide or disguise where the different textures will blend. And I'm going to use the grid lines to do that. So I'm going to um, hold, snap the points to the grid and I'm going to click again here so I get exactly that spot. And I'm holding down control because control is now a move to instead of a line to. So it's 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 going to then allow the poly it's going to continue drawing the polygon wherever I put these points, but it's not going to draw the line. And that's going to give me this nice effect. So I can um, I'm going to click here. I'm going to, you can kind of see a little bit of a place where these two textures don't quite match up. So like I said, I'm going to use the uh, grid line to disguise that. And then I'm going to finish up over here on the other side. So this gives us something uh, pretty close to what Keith had developed with the coastlines uh, that he did with the very artistic coastlines. If you want something um, more custom, and of course I could have drawn a whole bunch more points to give you a uh, much more uh, detailed coastline. Um, but uh, I'm just doing something quick here. But you can see that the um, uh, the, the look is, is giving you that same kind of feathered um, line to the uh, to the coastline. So uh, I think that covers all the major changes. There's a lot of other changes related to these things behind the scenes, as far as like you know that that drawing that we just did. You know that functionality of being able to do the control click for and doing the move tos, for example, is, is, was required in order to pull off this coastline effect. Or there was a fix required to the settings for the um, for the width of your drop shadow in order to fix uh, or in order to pull off this effect. So there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes beyond that, but but those are the key things that are new in, in 145 and, and these changes have been kind of building for the past couple of, of releases, 43, 44, 45. I think the last video that we did showing off new features was based on 142, which was the, the, the coastline functionality that we just showed as well as the um, change to the uh, mountains where you can go up to tools and you can make your isometric mountains into features so you don't have things tied into one particular hex you can kind of have them have this effect where you've got them spread across so that's kind of cool that also cascades down to the um, uh, to the to the um, continent level as well so when you when you make this a continent level map it detects hey 
you've got mountains and and let's let's go ahead and give you a bunch of mountain icons uh, so it will span just like that all right but that's uh that's long enough i need to cap this off uh thanks for your attention thanks for your support um and uh we'll be making more features and adding more stuff into worldographer uh, so thanks a lot